afternoon, everyone, and welcome to your next instalment of Insight Intelligence with Mario Beckers. Now, before we get on to the show, just some housekeeping. Now, as today would have it, there appears to be some shifting of satellites and energy misdirection today. So not only has Zoom been playing up, but my satellite has been playing up and I've had to revert to the ancient ADSL system for my internet. And I really need you to listen to what Mario has to to say today. So if you see me not moving, I will put my photo up instead of me, but I want you to focus on the lovely um, Mario Beckers. Now, if you're listening live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, we have Hannah ready and waiting to listen out and watch out for your comments, your questions, and provide you with links to anything that we talk about today. Now, if you've missed any of Mario's important shows, I want you to catch up on YouTube, And that's Tony Lontis. And also you can follow um, Mario's YouTube channel as well. And the links will appear everywhere you see this interview. An important part of what we need to do each week is to recognize the international movement that acknowledges the special and important role indigenous communities play in the development of a country's cultural identity. This is incredibly important from my standpoint, so I want to graciously and gratefully acknowledge the people of the Yugamba language region on the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, the traditional owners of the the land on which we meet and broadcast and pay my respect to the elders past and present all aboriginal and torres strait islander peoples here today thank you for watching and listening now this is the next installment in a series of shows that i am doing with mr mario beckers now mario grew up in communist croatia which was then part of yugoslavia and he witnessed a lot of social unrest before finding himself in the middle of the Croatian war. Now, Mario's world was turned upside down and he was uh, ordered to present at the army barracks and thus started his journey in life at a mere 18 years old. Today, Mario is a natural born leader. He's a public speaker, an educator, a trainer, a result driven, best selling, published author. He's a relationship builder and a facilitator with extensive experience in in investigative techniques, interviewing, interrogation methods, corporate, human and competitive business intelligence. And this is an incredible place in which Mario and his team play globally and assist with all manner of investigative and surveillance work. Now, each week we've been talking about a different element of what Mario and the team do insight intelligence and today is no different welcome back to the show mario we're going to talk about forensic investigations today and i am excited um mario how's your week been going so far so good i must say like it was a short one as you know tony uh, we had uh, uh easter monday I know. and uh, this weekend it's again long weekend however um i i don't I see know. the time you know what i mean like that is um, you know, you just need to just take a break because of the sake of taking break. And but I can see the rain; it's going to force us to stay indoors this oh, weekend. No. <laughs> it's like it just man, doesn't make a sense. I'm serious. Somebody's manufacturing Australia this rain. Australia has yeah. been <clears throat> so wet this year, Mario. Hasn't very it? much, it, yeah, it, very it much. So yeah. much rain all over the place. Yes, it did. You know, I mean, um, like a, Mario. Yes. Lots of rain, lots of rain. And so Mario's in Sydney, which is also the eastern side of Australia. And the eastern side of Australia has just been inundated with wet weather, flooding, all sorts of manner of um, water-induced events. And we are appreciative of the rain. But we've had enough now, and I think Mario enough. would agree with we that. We have Sydney's enough. Had another round. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to say, but you know, I'm glad, I'm, I'm grateful to I'm to David Tony Lontis on her show, yes. and thank you, Tony, for um, 
allow me to be the co-host and as well i'd like to say thank you to the team in us and across the globe for making this streaming uh, possible to all our viewers so thank you it's wonderful mario that we have technology to um, assist us and in talking to people across the globe so it's now possible and doable to talk to anyone from the US, UK, Germany, uh, South Africa, just across the planet. And that's the purpose of why we have Mario on the show. And today, our topic is forensic investigations. And Mario's team used forensic investigations from data recovery to marine and automotive investigations and for court and tribunal proceedings as expert witnesses. And so, Mario, I wanted to begin this week. We all have a concept and idea of what forensic investigation looks like based on popular television shows. Can you tell us what it's like in the real world versus TV world? Thank you, Tony. Thank you for asking this question. I was the one who believed on for you know what's appearing on TV that is reality. Um, but forensic investigation, it's very complex uh, operational aspect. And I'll just draw this from the, my very first um, uh, how called the date with the, with the forensics uh, ninety five when I was in, in military uh, state security intelligence services, I was being asked to attend police academy. And I didn't have a you know, high opinion about this type of education you know, with other cops and you know doing all this fancy stuff because I believed I, I was the guy who knows everything. Unfortunately, I didn't know everything. <laughs> so the very first moment, exactly when we walk in police academy, and um, you can imagine, like, there's all these people highly educated, you know, with the 10, 15 years on the field as a detectives and investigators. <clears throat> Excuse me. I walked inside and, you know, it was noticeable that there's this guy doesn't belong here, me and other two uh, or three other uh, people from military, uh, because he had different green uniforms and, you know. We are all like mm. stiff and everything, you know, like 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 a robots. But I don't remember uh, the very very first moment from entering that class. There was a senior lecturer there for I don't know twenty thirty years, and first what he told us how to kill somebody, and you can't find a murderer. Um, and we we're like, oh, come on, we can find everything. So he was explaining the methods and the ways. And unfortunately, forensic doesn't start only from the from the scratch. It starts from the end. And as we as I build that momentum in learning, I become very very hungry for more knowledge. And sometimes asking for more knowledge yeah. it, is not preferable method because you're being noticed as like this guy. He asks for more and more. Um, yeah, forensic was presented to me at the very first uh, beginning from the moment that there was a crime happened and it happened you can't mm -hmm. find what what did uh who did so you build that to the questionnaire uh, model right you have a 10 golden questions of criminalistics which you apply in every forensic investigation so you don't see this on tv tony you don't see that investigators like oh, okay i need to yeah. ask these questions it's it is something which is applicable across a law enforcement agencies not those thing golden questions of criminalistics which are applying today as well in corporate world and gives you good direction where you need to uh, assess uh, how to conduct investigation so you had the first one you attending the crime scene in the tv shows you can see the crime yeah. scene is going to be you know usually everything's been sealed and everything has been perfect, perfect. <laughs> and you know then you see the investigator like using his imagination i'll come to this imagination a little bit later but yes. in reality when i was doing the training and education for those six months how to conduct a uh, forensic investigation of the suspicious deaths in where they've been involved uh vehicles all type of vehicles from airplanes mm. cars and trains and everything else um we were being given the tools to and you can imagine 95 there was not much digital technology then so it has been must be measured no. and so everything must be the sealed and everything needs to be uh, it, 
how to put this, um, need to be inspected in so many different ways, every piece of, of the evidence yes. that something happened, even today. So even today, we, we're we seeing the crime scene is, in the shows, as I say, it's perfectly sealed and the investigator comes there, he yeah. already sees the picture, right? Who done this? In reality, it's totally different. For something to happen, there needs to be mm. the motive. If it's a car accident, for example, yes. car accidents happened for the you know for the various reason you know uh, one drive one of the drivers lost they control, do. a vehicle he's not uh, technically yes. uh, you know capable to 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 be driven you know I mean on on the roads um, you know alcohol drugs there's so many elements why why yeah. some car accident happen. When it comes to the murder, there's usually premeditated murders or the you know the murders which happen from the from Crimes the fashion passion. side yeah fashions and all these things but always must be the some type of motive so it doesn't matter what's happened you need to investigate what caused that prior event which we don't see which we don't see on tv so that's a forensic ah. so you know like imagine the black box of the airplane and why they usually search yes. for this because that black box um has uh, all this metrics and data inside which shows how plane was functioning not just today but two months earlier three months earlier and particular moment an accident happened ah. so you can see there's a corresponding uh, activities what pilot stated to the behavior plane yes correct so you can't yeah. trick this one in first investigations usually you come on a crime scene which needs to be once when some crime happened People that don't know civilians, you know, let's go putting the, you know, the barricades and, you know, protect the, the, the field. Usually when the police mm -hmm. arrive, usually it's a patrol, comes police officers who are the first on, on a crime scene. Those people are the most um, yeah. um, most valuable important. for and important for any investigation because they're the first talking to witnesses. They, they, they uh, some, not some, excuse me. They shield the, the crime scene, they protect the crime scene, and yes. they secure a crime scene from, you know, people being, um, bringing the, 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 the Noisy, different yeah. type. Getting in the way. Yeah, like, and the people usually, like, you know, when, <laughs> in tragedy, is there's something happening, people walk around, you know, I mean, they leave their fingerprints, they leave their footprints, yeah. and so on. So, mm -hmm. when this happened, the patrol and police, they collecting the what's it called the macro evidence, right? The security macro evidence. This can be knife, it can be gun, the, the, the big evidence. Case shellings, yeah. That's called the macro. You have the micro evidence, which is like usually DNA, you know, the blood and and and, and the tissue, mm. hair, and all these things. So it's a two different mm -hmm. aspects in forensic investigation, very required. And then you start investigating uh, you know, the crime scene. Crime scene is must be as a select must be sealed, you know, marked properly because you need to make a photo elaborate and people mm -hmm. it can be presented to court or law today had the video cameras and you know it's it's much more uh, in detail before when I was studying there was no mm -hmm. uh, such a thing you know uh, uh, yeah. high quality resolution a uh, video right it was being done on a VHS camera yeah. beta camera and you can imagine all these grains like yeah. a Minecraft you know so just guessing <laughs> everything and so you can imagine how many crimes actually gone off uh, from 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 trials because unsubstantial is it, evidence is it harder for Mario is it harder to commit a crime in this day and age with all the mm -hmm. science and technology that we have obviously they still happen but is it a bit harder with all the knowledge that we have in this day and age uh you must take this from from the from the back and more or less and there was a recent yes. case in us where the lady she's been prosecuted and she's been sentenced she was googling on a google how to kill person, how to poison the person, and in all these things. So those uh, uh -huh. first time want to commit a crime, you know, they will look the ways to the shows, the series, you know, they go on the to internet. So yeah, so this is the micro traces as well. They're leaving, you know, behind themselves, which is mm -hmm. directing that they on a part that they were preparing to do uh, some type of criminal activity, take somebody's life. Some bad. Yeah. So <clears throat> when you take the, you know, because you asked this question. I reflect that question right now. When somebody is being uh, live being taken, usually it's going to be taken by technical mechanical means or you know or some other tools. Uh, tools can be personal yeah. hand, can be the knife, and you know all this. So when you do forensic investigation, of course the body goes into the 
into proper places where they forensically investigating how somebody lost their life, you know, due to what, yeah. with with what. So yeah. uh, sometimes you can't find yeah. the, the weapon, you know, if somebody was taken because everything we use it to some for somebody to take the life, it's considered a weapon. <clears throat> that can be, you know, the bottle yes. of water if he capable, of course, like a Riddick in yes. his movie, taken with the uh, killing people with a teacup. <clears throat> but that's considered a weapon. So forensically, they're investigating uh, and scientifically uh, examining the body to see how that mm. actually uh, was uh, caused, with what and, you know, how. And usually that's been involved in, I mean, with the, you know, uh, examining the entire body and, the, you know, it's a wound of the of the gun or the rifle, is a knife, yeah. is a screwdriver. You know, screwdriver is a very dangerous weapon. People, they don't know this because screwdriver is the difference between the knife and screwdriver. It is when screwdriver causes internal bleeding and that doesn't leave the traces of blood yes. outside. <clears throat> so people are, you know, being educated. Oh, wow in different ways poisoning it's a one thing you know what i mean and then of course as i said the black box you need to look into the historical mm. data of the person who lost the life you know mm -hmm. what was leading to to that moment that person lost the life and of course when you do this macro mm. and micro traces you know as the evidence you're collecting you try to match the databases you already have or the way somebody's been killed uh, people forget it quite often that some murders, uh, some criminal activities matching doesn't matter is a fraud or is a is a is a is a taking life to somebody. Uh -huh. But usually it's a, it's a signature. Everybody has a signature. Every thief has a signature. You know what I mean? They're using different tools and <clears throat> they're using different. Everyone, Mario. Every single yeah. person. Yeah, except if you if you don't if you the uh -huh. very first time the crime of passion. You know what I mean? That's what's often yeah. happened. For the different yeah. purposes, insurance, yeah. the money, and you know, I mean, the, the hate, the jealousy, they want to remarry and everything else. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. the world is full of these things. So it's not yeah. good enough to have that somebody has an alibi. An alibi can be created in so many different ways, and um, which we don't mm -hmm. see on TV. So, like, you know, what we don't see on TV, it's it's a, that legwork. Uh, we usually see the sh shortest possible version and you see the guy in, in a white coat or the lady in a white coat and she's doing something, you know, I mean, it's, oh, okay, I found yeah. the traces. <clears throat> traces, it's very hard to find. Let's just say, for example, when I was, and I was in a war, which I didn't know, um, when I was doing mm. this forensic investigation uh, training for six months at course, uh, we were um, collecting evidence of the people who use the firearm to take the life of somebody. And we are all been turning our yeah. heads towards the casing, to the weapon, and all this one. And all these micro traces, right, you know, it stays on uh, the the black powder, right? It stays, you know, on uh, your skin, yes. on your on your clothing. Can you and wash people, it off, Mario? You can wash the powder, but it still stays there. You know, I mean, the residue stays there because it's it's uh -huh. uh, it's an explosion mm -hmm. behind this. So there's a, there's this micro traces. You know, I mean, I can't I can't I can't teach people what to do. So, like, uh, but there's always yeah. a way to to match. You know, I mean, <laughs> what not to do? <laughs> yeah, not today. But so you uh -huh. matching the weapon. You know, the casing because they you know they use it usually. It's not so sophisticated way. You know, you you fire the 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 the, the weapon. You know, I mean, take the casing compare with yes. the casing because every weapon has a different uh point of contact between the bullet and the needle right and uh, as well there's a lot of these micro traces which can be collaborated between them to prove that person was using that weapon in a given moment to take to take somebody's life give sorry take somebody's life yeah, to kill somebody so forensic is not just coming yeah. crime scene and you know like we go in imagination now the Fancy stuff it is that investigates detectives using imagination. Imagination, it is very, very important. And this is not something which you write down on paper and put as evidence. So like in, in your life and anybody's life and particularly in the business, when something happened, you create a couple of scenarios in your head. That's what the detective is doing. They create mm. scenarios in the head based on evidence or uh, they found. So let's go make a difference you know in forensics evidence it is the knife the gun uh, you know the blood the fact it is that you're supporting collaborating evidences with a place and time or something happening which means like 
you can prove that that knife has been used by X, Y, Z. That's the fact. And or that person admit, yes, mm. I use that knife. That's the fact. So using all these evidences to build in your head a couple of scenarios. And in crime investigations or any investigation that's very important, that's what the pol- police or detectives are doing. They put a couple of scenarios, they see that something was happened, and they try to, in their head, uh, deduct with uh, every new evidence found to deduct one of the um, scenarios, which you come to most, <clears throat> that's yeah. correct. So you come to most plausible uh, scenario in your head, which you try to support with your uh, fact findings uh, methods, evidences, interviews, yeah. statements, and so on and so on. So forensic, it doesn't include only, you know, the person in the white coat or the doctor who opens the wound. Sometimes yeah. but uh, sometimes people who are doing this pathological examination or the autopsy, it takes quite some time to, to understand this, you know, because people don't understand yeah. when you come to for the yeah. autopsy, <clears throat> that person is open inside, outside, right? It usually goes the uh, cut here, you know, on the note and, you know, the chest, yes. they're open. So you examine everything, you know what I mean? And because you need to establish that person, he died from from certain wounds, but maybe had a failure in the bodies and, you know, the, some diseases which contributed to some mm. suspicious deaths. Usually, you know, uh, uh, Tony, nobody does an autopsy on somebody who died in their bed. It's a 79 years old and has a previous you know, medical conditions, cancer, diabetes, whatever, you know, not a medical. Yeah. But we have somebody who's a 15 years old yeah. and died in the bed. Of course, they're going to do autopsy, mm-hmm. you know, because it's not normal. It's yeah. not acceptable that a 15 years old, you know, healthy child dies in the bed. Yeah. Um, so forensic is mm. involving as well as like evidence collecting, researching the data, uh, matching the evidence to the, I will call the signature to previous crime events, activities happen. Usually, as I say, like there's a, there's a signature for the, each criminal how they're doing these things. And then, yeah. you know, you come to the point where uh, in, in forensic investigations, it's very important uh, that what you found, it's so very, very well evidented in that photo elaborate on the video, uh, diary, what they mm-hmm. present in the court and everything else, that follows the story and narrative of uh, when you mm. give to the DPP, uh, public prosecutor, that this scientific method has been used before and usually it's matching, you know, accuracy 99% of the crime before that. That's very important. And on TV, Tony, unfortunately, they don't depict this because they don't know how to depict this. And it'll yeah. be quite boring, you know what I mean? Like, you know, when you get the, you give the gun some, <laughs> you know, to investigate the gun and, try to find this doesn't happen again yeah. i mean simultaneously like this or you saw um born identity it takes right? a long time in real life doesn't it yeah Mario? forensics the, takes a long time because process takes yeah long time. because it's a science it's a science this is not something people can mm. uh mm. just uh you know then you have the forensic investigations for example where they found a body which is decayed and and and, and um you know being buried yeah, for a couple of years couple of that be Yes, it is because that's a very painful. First of all, because you know sometimes of this of the uh, bodies found after many many years, you know it's usually just a bone and some clothing. I don't want to go into details, but you need to match this person. It is person you found to the person we believe it's missing. So as, let's go say the police get a tip and they found that body after ten yeah. years. They need to say who is that person. So there's a lot of scientific mm. uh, work they, uh, on that body to establish identity of that person, you know, and to the medical records, to yeah. the blood type, to the DNA, which, which you need to call the, mm. some of these parents or relatives mm. or so all these things. Yes. So there, there is a lot of hard work in forensic and doesn't involve the guy who comes with the, with the gloves on his hand and gun. Usually people who do <laughs> the forensic work, yeah. So it's investigations you, you saw, it's they're coming in sealed, sealed, sealed yeah. suits, you know, I mean, everything else to be sterile as possible, not to disturb the crime scene and collecting the data and evidence else. And still a couple of days later, the crime scene has been sealed because you never know what's going to appear. Um, I had a case, uh-huh. uh, I have a several cases, I'm going to say this one. We, we have the very 
good um well it was more was in was a, was a hunch right the intuition that one yes, person yes, yes. was um, yes. um was taking the lives of the of, of certain profile of the people and my department has been mm. tasked because he was a high position um officer uh, to do investigation yeah. and you can't just come to somebody and like take the phone book and just like that's a whole that way it's like um you need to prove this <laughs> one so long story short for some reason uh, we got a tip from somebody that he's quite often he is uh, renovating his unit and you know fresh uh. coat of paint and everything else and you yeah. can't just run to somebody's apartment. Like, let me inspect. You know, you need to go to the uh, to the magistrate and ask for the you know, I mean, search warrant and everything else. And if mm. you don't provide enough mm. evidence, th- of course they're gonna say like, you know, are you insane? I mean, so we work very diligently with a with a with a store who was selling the the, the paint, and uh, uh-huh. one of the our sellers was actually our one of our uh, operatives. And he was start making uh-huh. questions that he's become friendly and he said, listen, I can help you, you know what I mean? Put, you know, extra coat and everything else. And, you know, he's become an ease. And anyway, we collected enough uh, mm. evidence, I would say, that we have the reason to believe that he was murdering people in his unit. And when we finally got a um, warrant, Tony, you know, I come with my team and uh, yeah. the unit was immaculate, you know, clean. Nobody has that immaculate unit. You know? I mean, it's like, it's so perfect, right? <laughs> but, you know, there is, there is no traces. Yeah. So like what we did, um, you know, we done all this UV lights and nothing could be found. Mm-hmm. And then what it happened oh, wow. as a, yeah, as a dusk was, you know, setting, I said, like, let's go do more because we done the UV lights, you know, the guy was not experienced. So he was doing the mm-hmm. UV lights and there was a bright light coming through the balcony. I said to him, okay, let's go wait uh... another hour to be pitch, pitch black. And of course, you can't, you can't, you can't hide splats of the bloods, you know what I mean? On a, on a, on a wall, just by Because it goes everywhere. Yeah. You see the, 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 mm. Biologically, our blood, it's, it's truly tremendous. You know, I mean, he gives a life, he carries a food and everything else. But as well, he can, mm. uh, it's a signature signature to every, every uh, grizzly murder, unfortunately. So we mm. saw that this is, there's a lot of, you know, splattered blood around the walls and nothing on furniture. Mm. And that he was sitting there, he said, that's a pain. So we need to prove that this is the blood will be, <laughs> you know, under like a 50 coats of paint. I'm just lying. Maybe it was a 10 paints of coat. I was just going to say, so he's done lots of paints of coat, but you can still see that there's blood spatter there, even yeah, because, under those paints of coat? Yeah, because what he forgot, yeah, because yeah, blood blood has a, a very unique features, which uh, they mm. you can't wash the way. So it doesn't matter how much paint he was no. putting there. And I think it was like a six, seven coats. And it was a very challenging for us. So we need to call the different Gosh. team to take a part of that wall. Literally take a part of that wall. Uh, you know, not just oh. scrub things. because, And then while you're doing that process, you need to record everything, what you're doing. Who is doing what? Why is doing? Uh-huh. With what tools? So uh-huh. there's no contamin- contamination of mm-hmm. the tools and everything else. And took uh, mm-hmm. took the mm-hmm. Forensic Institute in, in Capital City two months to prove that one of the Thai bloods was matching to the one of the victims. And then goes the process of trying oh. to prove more. So we we gone, you know, searching for furniture and we found that some things. It took us mm-hmm. seven months to find decent evidences that he was, yeah, I think it was a six or seven people he killed in his unit um, for the for the benefits of the financial benefits. So he had a good, you know, good uh story he will attract an uh, older lady in the old age and he will drug yeah. them and they will sign mm-hmm. him everything off and he become the owner and look he can't you know that's a suspicious yeah. activity itself but he can't prove that you know but when the person is missing who signed that document that he gives you unit and house and money you know it's enough motives there you know me to believe that's what it is but the body was missing mm. tools of the and oh. um 
Yeah, and what it happened, one of the knives we found with his child who was living with the mother in different city. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so like, you know, that was enough to, to prove, you know, I mean, that, you know, and then he admitted later on that mm. that's what he was doing. And, you know, he didn't bury them. He was using the machine for the mincing meat. And so it, it was, it, it was like, it was a very, uh, yeah, but don't forget, grizzly. you know, very grizzly. And, you know, they usually know that, you know, if you have no evidence, which they can relate to their activity, taking lives or murder, whatever it is. Mm. You know, they're going to behave that way for so long. But there's a breaking point. There's a breaking mm -hmm. point because they always come back with more. We, we are alive. We need to take a more paint. We need to take a this, you know. And um, he become an unease and uh, uneasy. And we uh, knew that we were going to track. So mm -hmm. we started his imagination. And eventually he break out of the six, seven months took us from that moment of inspecting those walls yeah. scientifically to prove that the blood belongs to one of the victims. The tools which he was using was using for the for, for the purpose of taking lives. And then, you know, as well, garbage. We, we need to uh, search the garbage as well. Yes. So that's a forensics. You know, I mean, it's a scientific approach. Yeah, uh, that's in collecting and takes a long analyzing time and yeah and presenting a lot of you know. training and understanding as well yes. mario so um, goes into my job that. was only to my job was only to investigate my job was not even um you know to 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 because i don't know how to look the blood on you know i mean i don't know how to you know i presenting mm. evidence or, or, or you know i mean uh, to the to the to the team of the scientists, you know, I mean, who knows how to do this. Mm -hmm. So we all work together to try to prove the theory, most plausible theory, and then we'll start digging more and more and more, and eventually you find. But that's like people believing by going to Google, they're going to educate themselves. Same goes in a, in a white collar crime, in a fraud. Fraud is another aspect of the where yes. the forensic investigation goes. Where I'm fitting. It's that the fraud. same process isn't it mario yes. for fraud and for motor vehicle insurance fraud um uh, marine uh investigation it's the same extensive process isn't it to find it out what it crime is. has been committed yeah. and you're telling me that there's always a motive um behind that crime the bit that always escapes me is that no amount of money in the world would convince me that I needed to kill someone. So I, I, I struggle to understand what happens in someone's brain that flips that switch that causes them to think that uh, killing someone or uh, creating um, a motor vehicle accident or burning a boat uh, to collect the insurance money or, or the the proceeds is enough to kill someone. That's the bit that I don't understand. I'm not a psychologist and I'll not go in that part because yeah. I can't I can't verify. I'm not training this one. But what I can say from mm. my personal experience, every each time yes. when I do investigation, regardless is a marine, is a car accident, uh, and in the past when I was doing all this uh, criminal investigations where it's been involved yeah. um, espionage or murder people always justify themselves in that very moment only don't forget everybody justify their ah. action and okay. they will portray themselves like um they're gonna portray themselves in the best possible way but when they've been caught they're gonna say that they are had a reason to do this and the reason taking somebody's life does not exist. Not even, you know, when, when people, you know, in US is that's obvious, you know, the way they executing the the, the, the the inmates who are being, you know, um, sentenced yes. to the death sentence. Even that is a lengthy process. People stay in prison for 20 years, 30 years, and nobody takes nobody's life, you know, no, nobody has a right to do this. But from my personal experience, particularly when it comes to investigations of the as I say, marine type of investigations, uh, car accidents. Yeah. People mm -hmm. have justification why they this. It's very hard to you prove that some person, you know, look, it looks very, mm -hmm. um, how to say, Tony, very uh, pleasing 
for the somebody to say, I draw myself between the Sydney Canberra, some on the highway, and I and I hit kangaroo, right? Okay. Yeah. But there's no trace of kangaroo on your car because nobody asked him to to you know to prove this. We ask these questions. But as mm-hmm. well, you ask yourself, why would mm-hmm. you travel in, in Canberra? Why would you travel in Canberra at seven mm-hmm. o'clock at night? And that's how they are mm-hmm. falling all these things because you're supporting your theory of investigation during the question uh, time that you are they support you with the, with the, with the evidence that they what they did it's true now what most of the uh, process for getting particularly in dealing with my company and i'm very proud of investigators working for this firm i always report in this one yes take the extra length go visit the scene check the scene so you know somebody uh-huh. will say i'll drive the car also the scene it was a very rainy very rainy uh, that was happened three months ago don't worry Bureau of Meteorology has the access. You know, I mean, where was raining that day? It wasn't raining that day. It, yeah. So you'll this be is, able to know. Yeah, of course. And then I hit again kangaroo, but there's 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 no kangaroos there. You know, I mean, there's you know, I'm just gonna just exaggerate. You know, I mean, it's yes. just the mount, mountains, right? Mm. So you know, yeah, you forensically inspecting the evidence by inspecting the crime scene by inspecting the uh, statements given to you to access the answer. Because when you are being asked what happened, this is your statement. Mm. Our job is yeah. to approve or disapprove your statement. Yes. Mm. And this is where the most of the uh, fraudsters believing they can go away. It cannot go away. Particularly with the fire. Even fire, we're doing fire investigations. Mm. And people, you know, investigations we did in, in the past, uh, it's always trace because people who are doing those type of investigations for my firm, they already know what to look for the source of the fire and they yeah. know what has been yeah. used to ignite the fire. And, you know, as like, mm-hmm. you know, today technology, today DNA, Tony, even your neighbor has a CCTV. Yes. So, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, maybe you set up everything <laughs> for your backyard, but your neighbor has a CCTV and says, no, 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 no. Well. Yeah, yeah, I saw the Tony and Mario walking the street to walk in the morning and <laughs> pushing the Yeah, yeah, door. they had a can of petrol. <laughs> what were they doing? So, you know. They were is... heading towards that boat. <laughs> yeah, so the criminals need to think this this way. It's not what you know or what you can prove. It's what other it people is... know. Exactly. And that's where the problem starts ah. for many. And you have the many organizations who are uh, being the victim of the fraud and they hire the many firms to be investigated. Uh, and I saw this sloppy investigations as well, um, where mm. I will ask questions, you know, why this is not has been done. I know my client, but I ask myself. So either not enough training, not enough experience, or they don't know what they're doing. Either way, mm. I need to rectify mm. everything. And usually the witnesses are those ones who come out and say, is it true or is not true? So even that part, yeah. but say for these investigations, it's nothing what they look like on TV, particularly in, in, in uh, law no. enforcement agencies. And secondly, because Tony, if that's a true, every crime, every crime will be solved in 24 hours. <laughs> it's not that point. Yes. Yes. Mario, your early forensics career was obviously in um, police and, and military and, and that true criminal sense. And your company now still works within that arena, but it's often around those fraudulent type activities that we've just talked about, um, including, you know, car accidents, marine accidents, um, air accidents, but it's also around data. And I wanted to make sure the audience is aware that this is quite a big part of what you do and your expertise is around that intellectual property data, uh, suspicious activity, deletion of data, uh, securing data. You do quite a lot in that area and it 
I'm guessing um, that it's becoming quite a big thing and a quite big part of what your company does is around protecting, recovering uh, data. Can you tell us a bit about that, Mario? Because despite, I know that your team are hugely um, trained in all avenues and I'm thinking that this uh, electronic data area and fraud around electronic data it's completely different from say you know the forensics and science biology type um, but it's equally important isn't it it can have huge impacts on companies and business if someone takes their intellectual property or deletes right, yeah. their data or they can't recover their data there's a huge amount of work that is involved where your team have to come in and find stuff or find who took the data or recover where the frauds happened within business. Can you tell us a little bit about that, please, Mario? Absolutely, Tony. We are witnessing you and I that world around us, including us inside this world, every day yeah. it's more and more developed. Uh, what I'm saying, is, what I'm saying ah. is, in my previous um, conversation with you on forensics, mm. 95, I entered that world and everything was a manual, mm -hmm. analog, there was no digital technology. What it happened in yeah. past 20 years, we, the world becomes flat. And I don't mean literally flat, but yeah. everything's happening from point yeah. A to point B via internet. Or perhaps Elon Musk mm -hmm. satellite. So hello, Elon. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's a point. It's a yes, point. can we have uh, your satellite back on? Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Elon, for that. Elon, making the world, uh, world around, around again. So... Uh, but everything's mm. happening in a point A to point B with a flat line, I would call the internet. And in the past yes. few years, all our listeners and viewers now would agree that COVID put us in a situation we never experienced before. Either corporations were being mm. prepared or nobody to work from home. Yeah, Working from home, mm -hmm. in, in a nutshell, means that we, our majority, were using day domestic technology, home technology. Laptop at home is not necessarily yeah. equally strong as a computer at work. Plus at home, you don't have the mm -hmm. firewalls and all these safety secure features we are applying to protect our data in corporations. Now, that's not, yeah. the, that's not the issue. The issue is the behavior of recipient and those who is sending the message mm -hmm. from point A to point B. And the gatekeepers usually is us. So technology, once when we log into computer, Tony, you know, we open the door. We invited yeah. everybody. Someone's going to mm -hmm. ping us on a chat, on yeah. Messenger, Twitter, whatever it is. And in 2014, my company, one of the one of the one of the projects we done because it's very significant. We've been um, mm. tasked by the company from US National Destructing uh, Safety Security data you know it's a, it's a big acronym for them but they basically what they're doing they're doing the data destruction uh sorry the destruction of the corporate um property and uh, data and so on yeah. and what they did to us they say they want to see how it's possible that data is leaking from corporations and we all oh. know that feeling when somebody take advantage of us corporations usually learn yeah. this later but individuals earlier so what they did they purchased 52 yeah. hard drives 52 we don't know origin they know where they've been purchased they purchased across the globe include, include inclusive australia and they deliver to us oh. and they say this is the 52 yes. hard drives we like to know if it's anything deleted or is anything there or it's just empty oh. So we didn't know what was new hard drive or was old and, you know, mm. operations usually give the hard drives to somebody deleted data. Um, uh -huh. From 52 hard drives, we found on 27, if I believe, 27 hard drives, we found the data. Majority of these hard drives has been uh, sold by company to the market right? oh. because yeah because you know, like you know yes. uh, that is the latest so we can you know recuperate some money we sell in the hard drives from 52 i think mm -hmm. we found almost 27 yeah uh 
data hard drives is data being there and uh, most of them the data was being hard drives was being given either for destruction or they've been reselled i believe in the company they give the hard drives to the data oh. those not the later and that itself is a problem because oh. because once yes. when you purchase that hard drive and you put in your computer your laptop whatever it is you're already accessing very mm-hmm. critical and very sensitive data of some corporation information and selling information today, it's very easy. How this is happening, Tony, what people don't understand, the fraud doesn't happening only um, by stealing the data. You need to sell the data. This is where the problem is. And to sell the data on a market, I'm not happy to share with everybody this at this first stage. There's a couple yes, of gaming platforms, keeping ha- few gaming platforms where well, you and i playing you know purchasing the homes you oh. know the armies yeah so that's how the data yes. exchange is going yes. on and that's the way the market it is so it's you have the gaming platforms where the genuine people play millions of people every every given moment yes. but actually the trading of information is mm-hmm. going there and they purchase it from each other the data oh and, my goodness and it's very difficult to trace this once when the data is out so whether my company goes, yeah. it's they investigated that potentials, uh, the potential uh, breaches of the uh, of the cyber security, but not in terms of the inspecting just the cyber side. So it's but, a crime. Uh, it's a crime, Mario. It's, a crime. it's definitely a crime, isn't it? It's a crime yeah. to sell company or corporate information that you don't own the rights to. It's That's a correct. criminal activity. But they're doing, yeah. you know, like you can, you can look, you, you and I can go on a train tomorrow, you and I, Tony, driving from Sydney to Melbourne, mm. just an example. And I guarantee we're going to find yeah. the mobile phone, we're going to find the USB. So the question is, what people do with this? Of course, the right. the curiosity is it's, drives the people. Mm-hmm. And they will plug into the laptop yes. or computer, open that mobile phone, hack it, whatever it is. Yes. They're going to say, wow, look mm. at this uh, 1 in 100 uh-huh. will be malicious intent, and that person will do everything. Really? Yes, because as again, it's like, um, you don't need to do this in Australia, but you send to your relatives in US, for example. Where? They, they, yeah. they, they start digging mm-hmm. these things, mm-hmm. whether it's you're far away from this judiciary uh, arm of the law and, and, and the prosecution. Yeah. So, that's why you go to the clients. So it's always stipulated prevention is a mother of all victories in business rather than being investigated. However, uh, how bigger we are, corporations, they are, they're hiring all these experts and teams and uh, they're hiring ah. people just based on, uh, you know, recommendations and uh, due diligence has mm-hmm. not been done mm-hmm. properly and the data is flying out of corporation. Ah. Same go with the fraud. And don't forget, Tony, uh, when somebody's in charge of uh, some operations in company and is determined to commit a fraud, they will do everything to cover the traces. But you can't cover uh-huh. everything. There's this uh-huh. micro trace, this is the micro traces, no micro, micro yes. traces, which they we're finding during investigation. You Go for the yeah, for the Absolutely. There's always the signature somewhere. There's always digital fingerprint. Okay. There's always intent and motive yes. for something to be done. Just need to know okay. how to investigate. Yeah. Mario, it's not just big corporations that uh, can be impacted by these sorts of crimes. There's a lot of identity theft happening in this world um, from mobile phones, from laptops, from devices. Um, and, and it really can disrupt someone's life to have their identity stolen, can't it? Absolutely, Tony. I agree with you 100% on this one. And as you know, you and I, spoke to the earlier and in you know many other days mm. uh we don't go too far away you know we you can go just on any social media platform and see uh uh-huh, mario Baker has a 50 yes. million followers i don't but i'm saying and people you know copy <laughs> my replica try to look at my facebook and they will try to come in touch with everybody anybody that's a good start um yes. it's hard to mm-hmm. to prevent something Facebook's you... very prolific yeah. Yeah. for those sorts of things you know yeah so you you can't not to hey but always come to the people be careful what you put there content is a is a king of the victory this in the this instance um mm. people love to 
project something out and they try to project their power, their money, their status and everything else. More you project these yeah. things out, more appealing going to be for identity theft. And as I said, like Targeted. COVID, yeah, exactly. Architects behind all this identity mm. theft, they have the motive. Usually it's some money, right? It's usually some money. Um, we have to see a lot of the yeah. uh, crime of hate, I will call this, where the revenge goes, you know, business partner versus yes. business partner, uh, ex-lovers, you know, all these yes. things and try to uh, hurt people. Yeah. But that's what it is. Identity theft, it's a real, and, you know, even I don't know in this very moment that somebody doesn't use my name to say oh, I was Mario Beckers with Tony Long yes. doing this, da, 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 da. but it's over the phone. So they can't yeah. verify this. That's where we come, Tony. Try to verify mm. identity of the pers- person uh, or the group yeah. for the purpose of continuity of the business or you know hire them or whatever it is. Yeah. But identity theft is real. It's happening and it will happen, continue happen yes. regardless what we put there because don't forget one thing and always come back to that point fraudsters Mm -hmm. have the one great tool and that is imagination so they imagine the things before even they conduct a cycle of attraction our job it is yeah to extinguish these dreams and uh prove that they committed (laughs) uh, fraud or crime and uh law enforcement they just take over and uh everybody else who is necessary to prosecute that crime Mario, if someone has had their identity stolen, um, you can help them find where that's gone and who's done that, can't you? That's correct. Uh, we, we've done it many cases. Like, I'll not drop the numbers. I was like, just going to say that's uh, a lot yeah. of work uh, it's, hap- it's, it's, it's happening at least two or three times per week where the people come to us and they say, oh, uh, this, this, this way. Because, again, police can do so much, right? And that is why they're hiring us. And they, to it there. Yeah. I was just going to say, people think that police have this huge capacity to help and fight crime. Well, actually, they don't. They're focused on the high-level bad things. And so if you go to them in an identity theft situation, the chances are that they won't get to solving your crime simply because they don't have the manpower and the time, which is where companies like Insight Intelligence can help. Because if you understand that the police are busy, they don't have the resources, you can actually get results by going to a private company like Insight Intelligence to help you solve it and then go, okay, guys, here's the the evidence. Please get this sorted. Um, And that's I think one of the best things that I've learned from getting to know Mario and Insight you, Intelligence Tony. is that there is help out there. You just need to think about it differently and not expect that in all situations the police are going to be able to do everything to solve your crime. That's and you great, might Tony. want to be a little bit proactive and engage with a private investigator, a private in- private investigative firm to help get things happening quicker and sorted quicker, Mario. That's correct, Tony. That's correct. That's like, again, police gets calls per day, thousands of calls, you get two calls. So, of oh, course, yes. you know, they need to yes. sort, they have so much on their plate, you know what I mean, that they can't attend everything simultaneously. They need to prioritize. And that's where they we can't. step in and we help the people to sort out these things and then go to police with the evidence we collected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mario, I've just looked at the time and I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to talk to you <laughs> about flying, being yes. an expert um, witness. <laughs> I know, I know. There's yeah. so much to talk about. It's so yeah. good. It's fascinating we'll stuff. Touch and I, time, what a privilege. Probably. I was just going to say, what we'll do, audience, is we will touch on expert witness um, and how you help in that realm as well because yes. it's a hugely important component of what you do. It's very important and there's some key elements around being an expert witness that are important for people to know. So we will continue this conversation next week starting with uh, the expert witness and and judicial system and court processes around that. But Mario, thank you so much for sharing from that depth of knowledge and expertise. Um, I love talking to you. I love (laughs) getting to share you with the audience. Um, And I'm 
I want people to know that if you've got um, questions, please reach out to Mario and the team at Inside Intelligence. All it takes is a phone call to one of the team and they will be able to let you know very quickly how they can help, if they can help and what your next steps might be around things like fraud, identity, uh, theft and uh, surveillance, investigative work and fraud. And if you're a business listening and you're thinking that you have a fraud issue within your business or company, again, reach out to Mario because the team are experts and they will be able to lead you on to the next steps of what to do and how you can get that situation sorted. Mario, we were also going to mention, and I quickly want to mention because Mario also has a live a radio show out of Sydney on a live 90.5 FM on Wednesdays called Life is a Battlefield. And I quickly wanted to do a plug because it's a great show. Um, again, you, Mario is an avid believer in the education of the world and to share with people about his life experience which is extensive i am absolutely privileged to call mario one of my friends and that my wonderful audience is your lot for this week mario and i will promise to be back week next week don't forget to tune into the replays of the show we will also replay this show uh in australia and the us over the week end as well because I think this is such important information for people to have. Mario Beckers, thank you so much for coming thank on the show. So much. It's Thanks a privilege so to co-host with you and I can't wait till our show next week. Mario we'll Beckers, following. everyone from Inside Intelligence. We will be thank back so next week. That's your lot for this week. Bye for now, everyone. Bye. Bye.